Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazadov's chess channel and welcome to the TCECC's 19 Premier Division. So after many rounds the TCEC Premier Division is over. Stockfish has won the Premier Division with a comfortable two and a half point lead in front of Lilith Zero. But uh, still in order to win the TCECC's 19 Stockfish has to play the Super Final against Lila. We have expected that the outcome of course Lila C0 and Stockfish are simply too too much stronger than the other engines although we have really we had really great engines like fire komodo uh stuflis uh Elenstein and really this brutal engines but simply it's a huge difference between stockfish and, and lila Caesar and this other engines that's why this super final is fully deserved and, and and we're expecting again a brutal final as uh we have seen now in the previous tc easy seasons that lila c0 was all always a little bit slightly better but now the stockfish engine is the top favorite in the finals i think stockfish will brutalize lila in their 100 match game so today uh, before this uh, super final starts i decided to show you another great gameplay by stockfish against komodo and this was a very intense game as uh, komodo was the only engine who managed to get a win against uh, stockfish and i've also analyzed the game so uh, basically they played the same opening so all stockfish had to play uh, sort of a dubious opening with the move queen to c7 it will happen again now from uh, komodo's perspective komodo will have to play also this little bit bad line and uh, komodo uh, managed to win uh, the game as i said with the slight advantage with this bad opening now it was time for stockfish to show how stockfish will brutalize this bad opening and it happened really in an early stage of the game it's really incredible how stockfish punished this uh, this slight inaccuracies in the game and the cool part about the game is that i uh, mentioned in my analyzed game of the komodo versus stockfish when komodo won the game that this knight to b5 is a common tactic that can, that you can use against uh, for instance the knight of defense and the funny thing is that stockfish applied this knight to b5 sacrifice i was really happy because i suggested that move and the stockfish played that afterwards so i was really happy when that happened so it's really really a brutal game if you have troubles to play against the nightwolf or the shevening setup of the nightwolf uh, be prepared this is really a brutal attack again by the fish so let's check out now uh, the game as usual we say round one and uh fight so fight. E4, uh c5 so that was the the pre-arranged setup uh, so as i said komodo won the game in the same setup we have d6 uh d4 c takes d knight to d4 knight to f6 and knight to c3 a6 uh the knight of preparation we can play of course e6 or e5 uh, the e6 is the shevening setup uh here bishop to e3 and now we have the shevening i really like to play the shevening there are the the main ideas about this uh setups of blacks is of course uh here this restriction of minor pieces so no minor piece activity can happen here on the fifth rank uh there is also uh, this uh potential expansion with the move b5 if white castles on the queen side but there is one main problem about uh, the shevening setup there are always these tactical threats as i said around the square b5 but also we saw that komodo crushed the really stockfish with the knight to e6 sacrifice so these are the tactical targets of course um, of uh, of this opening so uh, it's really important for us to see this uh, top engine games as as i said so komodo played this knight to e6 sacrifice stockfish will apply now the knight to b5 sacrifice so as i said for those who have troubles maybe to play against the shevening uh these two games are perfectly fine so f3 this is now this common english attack uh, f3 g4 g5 h4 h5 i mentioned it also in my previous analyzed game the main idea of blacks is sometimes to stay with the king in the center or uh black will castle on the king side too so black will not castle on the queen side never in this types of setups so that's why we should immediately prepare prepare here a uh, king side expansion with the potential g5 uh, g4 g5 h4 h5 move so uh, here b5 you see black has already an expansion the knight to b5 sacrifice doesn't work immediately because you have to support uh, the attack also uh, what you want to do is create after queenside castling a rook and queen battery then at least you want to take one pawn so the knight on b5 after a takes b5 knight to b5 but you want to take also the d6 pawn so when you see that that's uh, pliable when you can take these three pawns 
then this tactic could work. So here queen to d2. And now this move queen to c7, that's the last move that was prearranged by the TCEC. So from this point on, the engines are calculating this position for themselves. So as I said, uh, this queen to c7 is basically a bad move. Uh, the queen is a little bit exposed. As I said, this tactical shot on b5 is really possible. So here queenside castling, we have bishop to b7. Uh, in the game uh, here g4 was played if you uh, try here uh, b4 immediately instead of uh, this bishop to b7 idea it seems like a dangerous idea as you have already a uh, dangerous attack against the knight but it's really a bad move because we have knight to a4 and you cannot attack the knight with bishop to d7 as queen to b4 uh, will happen so uh, if you try for instance to protect uh, here instead of bishop to d7 if you try to protect your b4 pawn and try may maybe something uh, happen here the knight to b5 you see you lose your d6 pawn first of all you could uh, after the move queen to c6 we can also play knight to b6 so you see these knights are already very dangerous and it's game over here for for black so black has to be careful also about this move um, b4 so you see uh, you have to prepare this b4 you cannot just rush into attacks here bishop to b7 was played by uh, by komodo and now g4 we have knight to this uh, knight to uh, d7 the idea about this move is to get the knight on b6 and then after a potential b4 to cut off this very important uh, square uh, for the knight of course the, uh, the square a4 so it's a preparation uh, staying a little bit with the king in the center but the king is so far not in danger that's not the problem of blacks because black has i said uh, uh this very important restriction of minor pieces uh has also this pawn central control which means uh for those who are watching my videos for the first time i always talk about uh this pawn central control it means that black has the slightly advantage in the center as black has two versus one in the center uh two pawns versus one pawn uh here in the center so uh there are also some pawn breakthrough motifs uh, possible here with the move d5 but the king is in the center if the position opens too much uh, if black pushes the pawn uh the pawns too early then the king of course could be in danger so g5 here a very very nice move by stockfish it's, uh, it's really cutting off uh, here a potential blockade because in some occasions you could see also a potential h5 move now this h5 is not possible after g5 we would after potential a5 uh, simply take uh, g takes uh, h6 and then the pawn structure would be simply weakened so knight to b6 now comes this threat by komodo as i said the main uh, tactical threat is the move b4 so that's why a3 preventing this idea and now knight to d7 now comes this tactical shot so you see now we want at least to grab three pawns for this uh, for this tactic and i've mentioned that as i said in the go in the game komodo versus stockfish when komodo won the game uh, you should really calculate sometimes this potential tactic first of all what we should recognize in this position that uh, white has a perfectly secured king black doesn't have a secured king the king is still in the center after knight to b5 a takes b knight takes b5 and now queen to c6 and that's now the whole point of the sacrifice we want to get three pawns for a minor piece bishop to d6 and now after trades of uh, many pieces the position is much more simplified but uh, we see these are three connected pass pawns if these pawns would be split uh, if for instance this pawn would be doubled then it doesn't matter if you have three pawns they're not so powerful but three connected pass pawns here on the queen side it's i think simply now too much to handle for, here for komodo and now pay good attention how stockfish will play this play this end game really really uh, beautiful chess game this was so knight to c8 first of all you cannot of course attack uh the the rook uh, with the king we will simply uh, play rook takes b6 and uh, bishop takes b6 uh, giving up the rook for two minor pieces and now uh simply going with uh, with the bishop pair and three uh connected pass pawns against the rook and it's game over for black so that's why knight to c8 uh kicking away the rook we have rook to d4 what i really like now about uh stockfish game in the continuation was that stockfish is playing the best next active move stockfish really finds really the best next attacking move that's really incredible although you have to be careful i'll show also some lines in which uh, you can make a mistake here after knight to e7 uh, here bishop to e2 um, in the game and knight to uh, e5 and now rook from h to d1 so 
Stockfish has built the battery on the default. Basically, the pieces, uh, the bishops are on the best square so far. Uh, they're supporting our uh, potential progression here on the queen side with their pawns. We have castling and now rook to b4. You see, this is now the mistake, for instance, that you can make. A natural move for me, I, I would play that move for sure, would be the move f4. It seems okay. I've made some expansion again on the king side. Uh, I'm kicking away the knight. The knight has to be passive. But the problem is now, after potential knight to g6 and maybe rook to d7, it's not such a powerful um, a powerful game. We can simply kick away the, uh, the rook. And the problem is now, this f4 pawn could be endangered. And also this now e4 pawn is a clear target. So the rook would be a little bit stuck here uh, on d4. And now we could even break the position with the potential f6. Uh, really trying to get use of the f file. Maybe also uh, attack the weak e f4 pawn. I think black would find some kind of a counterattack here on the king side. So that's why as I said, uh, rook to b4, a better move. You see f4 is not so powerful. It can be played, but you have to prepare it. That's uh, the main I think difference between humans, the best uh, top grand masters, and now this engines. Rook to b4, we have bishop to c6, and now rook to d6. Again, uh, finding really the best next active square on the board. So it's really just an improvement of the position of the rook, simply creating a rook lift. There, there's, there's really no better square for the rook now on the board than this square d6. Again, a perfect move by Stockfish, rook to c8, and now finally f4, because it's a new position. Now the rook uh, is not anymore on the f-file, where, where it could create maybe some dangerous attack against this weak f4 pawn, so that's why knight to g6. And the pieces are now a little bit out of game. You don't want to have, your, of course, your knight on the edge of the board now this knight is really out of game so rook to c4 uh, we have knight to h4 and now f5 breaking the position this is really a great great move it seems that uh, basically this uh, f5 uh, square is three times protected but stockfish plays f5 anyway e takes f5 now the comes the uh, main tactical threat about this move bishop to f2 uh, so attacking the knight the knight has to come really on a really weird the unnatural square the knight is really endangered here and now finally e takes f5 the problem is now knight to f5 doesn't work because uh this knight is a little bit overloaded to the defense of the bishop on c6 will simply uh, grab the bishop so that's why bishop to a4 and now rook to d2 there is also a good simplification line for stockfish rook to a6 is was also a possibility which gives i think uh, white a comfortable game the position is much much better here for white rook to a6 rook takes a6 and now after trades of pieces we have a new position in which the position is more and more simplified but again we have the bishop pair and three connected pass pawns and this is i think a good game here for for white so after the move rook to d2 uh, we have uh, Rook takes c4, we have bishop to c4, so this wasn't played in the game, this idea, rook to a6. Uh, here, bishop to c6 was played, and now, again, a very active move, rook to d6. So, bishop to e8, and now, here, rook to d2, bishop to c6, and now, b4. Now, it's really time to expand. Uh, you cannot take, uh, of course, the pawn on a3. You get uh, checkmated with rook to d8, so that's why knight to f5 first, and now comes very, really a great tactic, a4. Pay good attention now what Stockfish has prepared here. First of all, you cannot take with the, uh, um, with the Rook uh, because you get some b5, but uh, you get some b5 moves and your Bishop is out of game. So if you take with the Rook, then you get Rook to d8. That's also a nice tactical preparation here by Stockfish in the game g6, played by Komodo, simply uh, creating some breathing spaces for the King. And uh, this pawn on g5, also pay good attention, it will play a very important role now in the continuation of the game because it seems to me that when Stockfish plays the game, every pawn move, every bishop move uh, has uh, really its meaning. Uh, that's why this g5, it's not only a pawn just like that, it creates a really uh, nice checkmate pattern, which I'll explain now in a couple of moves here. b5, we have rook to uh, a4 and now bishop to b3, kicking away uh, the rook we have bishop takes uh, b5 and now after bishop to a4 we have bishop to a4 and now comes really the tactical problem we'll give that uh, that was pathetic here by uh that was uh, by komodo because there is now the tactical shot here rook to d8 for instance here bishop to c5 
play by Stockfish. The main tactical threat, as I said, is Rook to D8. And you see now, the Knight is hanging. So if you try something like Knight to H4 to get out of the range of the Rook with your Knight, then you get checkmated. Rook to D8. That's why this pawn on g5 is very, very important. Now, after uh, king to g7, we have a check. You can move maybe here to h8, but now bishop to h6, and it's game over. You can only cover with the bishop, but uh, it's rook takes uh, e8, and it's game over. So that's why you see bishop to a4, and now bishop to c5, the discovered attack on the knight, but uh, you cannot retreat with the knight. That's the main problem as you get checkmated on the back rank. So that's why h6 had to be played, and now. Stockfish grabs a piece and uh, basically from this point on it's a losing game for black uh, at least for us humans it's uh, obvious that uh, black is losing here so bishop to uh, c6 uh, you have rook to uh, g4 h takes g5 rook takes g5 and now king to g7 the most important thing is uh, here for Stockfish that Stockfish has created a pass pawn so it's also a nice uh, element of the end game of course it uh, it plays a very important role. We can really try to promote the queen. And if uh, black wants to defend this, probably black will have to uh, give up a minor piece for the pawn. So uh, then well, white can continue the game with the whole rook up. So rook to g4, we have king to f6, uh, king to d2, and now king to e6. c4, we have bishop to b7, and now rook to g1, bishop to f3, and now king to c3. You have to play active with your king as i always like to say in end games the king should be treated something like that you have to defend you have to play actively uh king to c3 king to d7 and now rook to e1 king to c6 now the king will march on here bishop to f4 king to d7 and now bishop to g5 king to c6 rook to a1 trying to get this rook of course behind the spawns getting also the clear target here on f7 so uh, king to b6 Bishop to d8, and now after king to b7, now the king comes on a very active square. Uh, the king now uh, cuts off also this, this other king's activity. Bishop to g4, bishop to f6, knight to h6, bishop to e5, bishop to f3, and now simply some perpetuals. But now rook to a3, a counterattack. What Stockfish, of course, wants is a simplification line. If you take the bishop, I'll simply uh, uh, take the, your bishop on f3, and again... Uh, you have to, some worries here because this is a pass pawn, and I think that the knight cannot just uh, be the only supportive piece of these two pawns. So black will have troubles to promote here. On the other hand, uh, white has a clear path with this pawn. So after the move, rook to a3. So knight takes uh, g7 wasn't played, but bishop to e2, and now bishop to f6, bishop to f1, and now rook to a2, bishop to h3, rook to uh, d2, knight to h6, and now. Uh, bishop to g5, knight to g4, and in this position, um, Komodo resigned because uh, it cut off here this very important uh, diagonal. Now, the main threat is, of course, rook d7, and we'll simply take this pawn, probably after a couple moves, also this pawn. So it was game over. In this position, as I said, Komodo resigned. So Stockfish got its revenge uh, with the brutal, brutal knight to b5 sacrifice. So as I said, you can also check out my analyzed game Komodo versus Stockfish, in which Komodo played a great tactic on e6, so these are really the main tactical shots of uh, white against uh, the Knight of Shevening setup, so I think you can learn really something from these games, I really learned a lot, it really surprised me also the winning game played by Komodo against Stockfish, but also this game was incredible with this nice bishop uh, discovery attack on the, on the Knight, then preparing this checkmate threat, great great attack by the fish and I'm looking forward, as I said, to watch the super final between Stockfish and Liva C0. Be prepared. This will be a wild, wild TCEC season final. So, okay. I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. If you want to see more brutal attacks like this, check out my other commented chess games played by computers. And if you want to see humans battling and they're in their best chess games, check out my best chess, game, best chess games of all time series. And if you like this content, you can also subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and... Uh, Chess is the best, of course.